Hey bookends, welcome to a 10 minute book review. I'm 10. Today's book review is going to be on Dog Flowers by Danielle Geller. So maybe not the best of pictures, but I believe this is going to be the cover art. Um, I hope you can see it. It's a cute picture, but I don't know if you can see it on my Kindle, but yes. Full disclosure, this review is based on a book that we received for free for the purpose of reviewing it. So jumping right on in, we'd like to start off every review with a star point, as in out of 10 stars, how many stars did this particular book garner? And we also like to give a rating, as in if this was a movie, what would it be rated? Now, it's always difficult for Tu and I to give ratings, or I should say star points, for autobiographies, because this is on someone's life, so you can't really say if the content is, is good or not, because it's, it's someone's life. So, generally we just curate it on how well it's written, like how well it conveys what happened in this person's life, and how interesting we thought it to be. And so, this book teeters on a 7 and an 8, like between 7 and 8. It was well written, but we're going to discuss why it's on a 7 or 8. And for a rating, here's the thing, there's nothing particularly <coughs> vulgar in this book. There, I think there might be one picture that might be considered a bit vulgar, too, maybe. But for the most part, there are acts spoken about, like drug use and alcoholism, and even sex, but none of it is spoken of in depth. It's just, it says that it happened but it doesn't give all the parameters of what happened from it. Like, you're not going to learn how to have sex from this book. You're not going to learn how to do drugs from this book. You're not going to learn how to live like an alcoholic from this book. So I want to say a PG, but I'm going to move to a PG-13 only because I don't think a 7-year-old, if this was a movie, I don't think a 7-year-old would be able to watch this. But I do think a 12-year-old and older would be able to. Well, yeah, PG, well... PG-13, yeah, 12, 13 would be able to watch it. So this is a memoir from Danielle Geller. She is, I believe, half Navajo, half white. And the book starts off with her mother dying. So that that's not a spoiler. That's just a part of the book. It's in the blurb. Oop, almost dropped my Kindle. If you're wondering why I'm looking... Okay, I'm going to put it right here. If you're wondering why I'm looking down... I am finishing some masks, so I need to put little glue things on the bottom. These already have their little glue things to keep the toggles from falling off. But these do not have the little glue things, so that's why I'm looking down. So, yes. Uh, Michelle, not Michelle, what am I saying Michelle? Michelle Geller is an actress. Danielle Geller's mother died because she was a recovering alcoholic and she tried to stop drinking cold turkey. <clears throat> that threw her unfortunately into a heart attack and I believe a seizure and because of that she passed. Which is really sad because it's like she was trying to do what she felt was right. If anyone has an addiction to something, you know, the right thing is always thought to stop the addiction. To tried to quit and she tried to quit and she ended up dying because of it because of her death it kind of forces Danielle to think about some things that took place in her life as, as death generally does one interesting thing that I saw at the beginning of the book when she went to go visit her mother in the hospital because her mother was kind of in a vegetative state it reminded me of when my uncle died how okay so she was saying that the woman in the bed wasn't her mom even though it, it was her mom but the way she looked the way she felt it wasn't her mom and when I went to go see my uncle who had passed well before he had passed and he was in the when he was in the hospital he looked just like himself but he didn't feel like himself 
so that I, I can understand that that feeling like when you know someone's going to die and they don't feel like themselves anymore their flesh doesn't feel the same there are some interesting quotes in here that uh, precede each section the first quote that I thought was interesting was the way her dreams must have felt back then wide open and so much space to be filled Laura Tooth sometimes she dreams so Danielle talks about her mom and how when she was younger she left the reservation because her mom is fully Navajo so her mother left the reservation looking for something better she just wanted a better life that was it she didn't want to get in trouble she didn't want to do you know bad things she just wanted a better life and so she thought that she was going to get that better life off of the reservation and she had so many prospects ahead of her and life began to happen she met Danielle's father and I don't believe that Danielle's father is the, the only reason why things started to happen with her mom but I think that was a major part of it so he was an alcoholic and he wouldn't treat her very well I don't think that he didn't love her I think that in his mind his abusive nature was just a thing it wasn't abuse to him I don't think I think it was just okay well this is just a thing this is just a thing that I'm doing and that's it she mentions at one point that her father brought up something about her mom like when she was grown that uh, her mom the yeah her mom was the one that hit him it was always it's getting things with him and stuff but Danielle was like I clearly remember my mom underneath a table after my dad had beaten her and she was underneath the table crying. Clearly remember that. The second one that I highlighted was what keeps you alive in crisis can kill you once you are free. One must not choose to die, though one must die anyway. And that's by Tanya Tagat in Split Tooth. So that's an interesting way to think of addiction. People, why do people get addicted to things? Why do people do drugs? Why do people want to drink? Why do people get addicted to sex or to bad relationships? And long story short, it's a survival mechanism. No one started doing hard drugs just to see what hard drugs felt like, or very few people do that, I would say. Very few, they must be rich to be able to afford that kind of a luxury of being able to just decide I'm going to do a hard drug just so I can feel what it feels like but for most people people decide to do heroin or crack cocaine or weed or drink heavy because they want to escape what's hurting them they don't want to die they want to find a coping mechanism that can help them to continue on living and just get by and so the one thing that helped them through a crisis, which may be the drug of choice that they're using, whether it be something physical or something emotional, like something like drugs or something like sex or bad relationships, whatever they're using to cope to get through the situation that they're in, that can also be the thing that kills them if they don't stop. The book goes back and forth between the present and her young childhood. So she had an interesting childhood. Her mother ended up, I don't want to say abandoning them, but leaving her and her little sister with her father. And her father, who was an alcoholic, found himself a girlfriend to help with the kids, I guess, who had her own kids, who decided to molest uh, Danielle and her sister. I find it interesting how candid she speaks about soft molestation. So there are different types of molestation. All of them are wrong. All of them are bad. But it's the mental that goes behind it that determines whether it's, you know, the method, the mental method, I should say, that goes behind it, that determines whether it's considered soft molestation or hard molestation. And so a soft molestation would be like, um, hey, I want to show you something new. And then they, they do something in that way. Or 
this will make you feel good or doesn't this feel good things like that as opposed to I'm just gonna grab you and do what I want so her I don't want to call stepmom because she didn't marry her you know, she didn't marry Danielle's dad but her dad's girlfriend her son was molesting Danielle and he was doing it in a way that made it out as if it wasn't that bad it was just exploration and I think that left Danielle a bit confused it also probably left her sister Eileen confused as well when the police found out they found out through the grandmother I believe through Danielle's grandmother because you know her dad's mom so when the police found out of course they took Danielle and Eileen away and they start living with their grandmother she got legal custody of them and the girlfriend whose kid was molesting them she had the audacity to say da to Danielle when the police came I hope you happy you're happy look at what you did to your dad and it's like Hafa what look at what your son did to me like she Danielle didn't do anything to her father and I don't think her father was mad at her per se I think he was mad at the whole situation happening but I think the anger of the adults was taken out in the wrong in the wrong way like Danielle didn't cause herself and her sister to be molested they were just little kids who existed in a space where bad things were happening it wasn't their fault and Danielle didn't even like want to tell anyone when the boy's sister walked in and saw him molesting her Danielle was like Shh, don't tell and you're next and it wasn't a menacing you're next it was a like don't tell if you don't tell you're next because I don't think she had a concept of what was happening and a concept of that it was wrong I don't think that she liked it but she also didn't have a concept of it it being wrong if you look at it from a child's perspective it's like not liking broccoli but you know you got to eat it because it's on your plate kind of a deal so not liking being sexually molested but this is just life kind of a thing and it's sad to look at it that way but if you look at it through a child's eyes it's like this is what it is if I don't have a vantage point of something better then this is what it is so she goes to live with her grandmother she and her little sister Eileen and the grandmother's boyfriend I was really nervous that something was gonna happen between them and the grandmother's boyfriend but as it turns out he's just he was a really good person every time I think step parents with young girls I think oh something's gonna happen but nope he was really sweet to them interesting thing about that too is he had three different wives before like not at the moment he wasn't polygamous or anything like that but he had had three different wives before and when they asked their grandma why didn't she marry him she was like no he becomes too controlling when he gets married you know he'll think that he owns me so it's better that we stay boyfriend and girlfriend and they stayed that way until he died and it was beautiful that he gave the girls their own individualized attention and I appreciate his family as well I believe his name was Don I appreciate his family as well because when he was in hospice they, did, they weren't like well t these little girls they not his grandkids for real because they're not even related and he not even married to their grandma and, no they were willing to take them along with them so that they could see him in his final hours and his final days so I thought that was beautiful of his family because they weren't petty towards children later on she and her grandmother once her grandfather dies they move out to Pennsylvania and I would say she has a pretty normal life I mean it's a cluttered life but it's a normal life if people who don't have money don't have options so they were living I believe in an apartment complex a nice apartment complex I would think but in Pennsylvania and her father comes to live there as well and so once again they're living with their dad and he brings himself another woman it seems as though the people in this story well not story because it's the truth it's someone's life but it seems like the people in this aren't they don't like being alone 
there seems to be an issue with being alone like if someone's alone then they have to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend some sort of significant other to be in their lives they cannot be alone and I don't know if that's because of the addictive personality uh, you never see a lonely crack fiend I don't know if you've ever seen a crack fiend before but you never see a lonely crack fiend they're either with someone or they're walking to someone but you will never see a lonely crack fiend and I don't know if that's a part of the addiction just any kind of addiction where you you know you don't do it by yourself or if it was just these people in particular not wanting to be by themselves but yes they moved to Pennsylvania the father ends up moving there too and he originally had a good job working with his brother doing tech now this was tech in the 90s so computer tech in the 90s so I'm not 100% sure what he could have been doing with computers in the 90s because I'm not 100% sure how far technology had come in the 90s to be able to say he was doing blah 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 but later on he was salvaging parts and stuff like that to create computers so he was a very bright person he was very smart he was able to fix a lot of different things even cords to be able to reuse them but yes, he brought a new person with him and Danielle really liked her. I think her name was Fran. Some red flags for me was that Fran, I mean Fran's a good person, but Fran liked to live in the wilderness, not in a like hiking type of a deal, but like I prefer to be homeless kind of a deal. Not that I have to be, but I just prefer to be homeless. Whenever Danielle's father would say something like off-putting towards Danielle, even though he, he loved Danielle, I just think he didn't have the mouth to talk to his kids sometimes in the right way. But when he would say something off-putting to Danielle, Fran would like say stuff like, leave her alone. He's like, I'm not bothering her. He's like, no, leave her alone. Like, So Fran would be the buffer between her and her dad. And in turn, she would be the buffer between Fran and Eileen because Eileen didn't like her. Eileen's younger than Fran. I'm sorry, Eileen is younger than Danielle. That, it didn't end up working out and that really hurt her. She said later on in the book that if she had met Fran when she was older, she might not have liked her as much. Which makes sense. When you're a kid, you let certain things slide when it comes to people's actions. Not that Fran was bad. Fran didn't do anything bad, but as it turns out, she was a crack fiend. She was a fiend too. And Danielle's father got mad at Danielle later on for kind of giving Fran a pass. Like, you're mad at me for being an alcoholic all of your life, and yet you're not mad at Fran. You think of Fran as this wonderful person. So, yeah. As a child, we kind of overlook things. I don't even think that she was mad at her dad for being an alcoholic. I think she was just mad at her dad for not protecting her when protection was necessary. He was just too drunk to do it. What I thought was interesting as well, a lot of the story takes place in a time period where I existed. So I, it was kind of nostalgic and she was a big gamer and I was a big gamer too. She played a lot of like I don't want to say magic, but like a lot of magic kind of games. Like those kind of RPGs. And I was more so into like space RPGs. Like science fiction RPGs. So we wouldn't have met up in the... Well, we might have. You know, it's a possibility we could have met up in a chat room back then. It's a possibility. You know, just her on her way to a fantasy and me on my way to a sci-fi. We could have met up on AOL at some point. Um... She ends up, as she gets older, she ends up getting several boyfriends on the internet. Not all at once, you know, but that seems to be how she, she found boyfriends. And, yeah, you know, I'm not going to tell too much because this book comes out next year. But I will say that it was very interesting. It was incredibly interesting how she was how she transitioned from Florida to Pennsylvania to Boston to Arizona like she was making moves and she had her issues 
and her dad had his issues and her grandmother had her issues her, her father said that her grandmother was an alcoholic a worse alcoholic than he was but it's interesting how the older generation can have their flaws but by the time the next generation is grown with their flaws that older generation is done with their flaws and so when the grandchildren come in it's like the grandparents look like they have never committed a sin in their lives and it's only my parents who are broken as opposed to why do you think I'm broken because your grandma broke me yeah also looking at Danielle and her sister Eileen you would think that Danielle is the good sister or the one who wasn't affected by the stuff that was happening around her because Eileen ended up being a drug addict and Danielle ended up being pretty okay like she says her issues but she's been pretty okay she wasn't on drugs or anything like that she was an alcoholic and the thing is just because someone doesn't turn to illegal substances or controlled substances for assistance with life that doesn't mean that they're okay it just means that their poison of choice isn't something illegal or controlled danielle's poison of choice was self-repression she repressed a lot of her feelings as she was feeling them and in the book it's retrospective so she's discussing her feelings in the book but as those feelings were happening live, she was repressing them, and that's how she was able to get past it. Um, and other things that she, she did was obsess over video games, have random boyfriends. And once again, it wasn't like she had a lot of boyfriends, but she would find just random people online, become friends with them, and then make the, you know, they'd become her boyfriend. Those would be coping mechanisms to kind of not have to deal with the reality of my family's messed up and people who cared for her would say okay well maybe you should just stop being around your family maybe you should give up on your dad and maybe you should give up on your sister and she'd be like no i'm not going to do that i love them too much which it was a good thing and a bad thing because a boyfriend can come and go but you're family is always going to be there whether it's a good thing or a bad thing they're always going to be there what I thought was beautiful was that her mother never burdened her her mother loved her very much and I think the reason why she left was because she knew that her kids would be taken care of even if she wasn't in the picture but that she couldn't stay in the picture as she got older Danielle got older her mother got more into the picture because as an adult you can interact with another adult but she never burdened her like okay well I need to stay with you for um, three months or for a year because I can't figure life out on my own like sometimes her dad did which didn't make her dad a bad person but also too it did show that her mother had love for her not burdening her with those type of things the way addiction was talking was spoken of in this book was very sensitive it didn't do a lot of blaming so that was that was a wonderful thing i really would look forward to reading more from her i hear that she's an essayist so i would love to see more from her i'd love to see maybe a fiction from her about uh, the navajo reservation so that would be nice because she's still too young to have another memoir or something like that out because she was born in 1987, so I mean she's in her, what, early 30s right now? So it's still too early, I think, to have another memoir, but I would love to see some sort of uh, contemporary fiction from her, or science fiction. I love science fiction, but I don't know if she writes science fiction because she's an essayist. But I would love to see some more fiction. I would love to see a fiction. This is not fiction, this is a memoir. So I'd love to see some fiction or something from her. Is there anything I'm leaving out? I don't want to spoil anything. Okay, no, that's that's gonna be it because I don't want to give any spoilers. So once again, this has been a review for Dog Flowers by Danielle Geller. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Bye, bookends.